Greetings, Earthlings. In the last video, we looked into the triangle inequality and we talked about how common sense is important and so when you're doing math, you're not just leaving your brain at home. So in this video, I want to extend that notion and talk about how do you develop your intuition for a subject in general. So we're going to talk about how to develop mathematical intuition, specifically geometric intuition. So I'm going to kind of talk about both of these, but since this is in the geometry portion of the Art of Math playlist, we're going to tailor it a little more to the geometric part. So there'll be two parts of the video. This first part will be the math, just math in general, or actually any subject. Um, and then the second part will be a little more about geometry. Okay, so there's kind of a three-step way we can look at it. Now, before we even dive into that, let me just say, this is not going to be the most exhaustive list of everything we could possibly do to develop our intuition. So, don't, you know, I don't want you guys to treat this as the definitive and the one and only correct way. I'm going to present what I think is a good way that hits a lot of useful things. So I hope you'll find this useful. So, but that doesn't mean you should not look past this video. All right, so here's a three-step process that I think will help develop mathematical intuition. Number one, do a large volume of questions. I've, I've put different words because this can go under many terms. Get a lot of experience uh, applications. So for example, let's say you're, you're practicing I don't know, the Pythagorean theorem or how to solve an algebra equation. You want to practice doing it many times. If you've only done it once, you can be kind of startled or maybe you're just trying to do a new procedure for the first time. So when you're doing this procedure, you're, you're not really internalizing it. You're sort of like, what was that next step? It's not in your bones yet. So that's why through volume, experience, application, all of that kind of business, you will get really comfortable and that will give you the kind of brain um, wave, uh, the, 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 the amount, uh, uh, it'll give you basically a part of your brain where you could start to think about, oh, what else can I do with this? You can't do that if you don't have comfort or mastery over the basics first. So now given that you've been doing a large volume of math questions, that may not be enough because maybe you've just been hitting one concept or one type of question. So number two is really, one and two are really kind of just one thing, but number two is make sure you're doing a diverse amount of questions. So a diverse type, question type, concepts, techniques. So for example, we haven't covered this in our series yet, but there are all sorts of techniques. There could be techniques, uh, the Pythagorean theorem, there could be sim similar triangles, there could be using angles, all, all this kind of stuff. If you're only comfortable with one technique or one type of problem, you can do all the volume you want. It's not going to help build your intuition. So we really want to hit, let's say, five, uh, two, three, five, ten, many different types of techniques, and within that, drill down and do a lot of examples within each of those. So that's kind of your foundation. Now, after you've done that, that's going to set the table for step three. So step three is going to be to integrate and connect these various ideas. Many times in school or whatever, wherever you, you know, whatever you're doing, you might even be exposed to a lot of different techniques and get a fair amount of practice, but there's not a lot of time for kind of in introspection and thinking and just kind of time for yourself to, to see, oh, I like the way this connects with that other idea. So this is really, this integration step is really important in many, and I'll make a video about this um, later on, I'm sure, but there's kind of a balance of getting information and integrating it. If you just get more and more information, more and more techniques, more and more practice, but you never stop to integrate it, it will never feel really comfortable. You won't own it. Same thing, but if, all, if you integrate and there's not much to integrate, you can't really do anything, right? You might just have one idea that you're good, one concept, one math technique. You, you're lacking just a You just need more stuff. You need to get more skills, more, more techniques. So that's why this is kind of the foundation. And then make sure you're always, as you're learning, you're integrating, learning, integrating. Don't, don't just do learning, learning, learning. So let's apply this to many other domains. So for, I mean, you could apply this to music, for example. 
there are a lot of people that just, they learn a lot of tunes, right? So they're, they're getting this, they're getting their new concepts, techniques, but they never spend the time to, to play around with them, to improvise on them, to, to write their own compositions. So you, you kind of want to do, learn some new stuff, incorporate it into the rest of your self. We can take the example of basketball. So let's say you're playing one-on-one -on -one with your friend, right? So you're getting a lot of volume experience application, but you're only playing, you're lacking number two. So you're only playing with one type of opponent. So let's say I'm playing against my friend and he's my height. So that means I get used to playing of, against people with average height. Have you ever played against a shorter person? Have you ever played against a taller person? Maybe your friend always drives to their right side. Maybe you're not used to defending on your left side. What, right? Maybe, maybe you're a lefty, maybe you're a righty. You want to practice in all these diverse situations. You want to play some two-on-two -two games, some three-on-three -three games, some full-court games, some games where you're playing the entire game, some games where you only get to play for a few minutes. If you haven't had that diversity of experiences, you haven't truly mastered. So your intuition for the game of basketball, which is no different from developing any other type of intuition in the grand scheme of things, is not going to be that great, right? So you'll see any, like take any NBA player who's great at basketball, you throw them into a one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two game, they're still going to be really good. Because to get to the NBA, they've had all these experiences. When you're playing basketball, you might be in a kind of a dense formation where it's really five on five, or you might be on a fast break where there's like two on one or two on two. So if there's like a component that you're not really doing, that, that's gonna limit your intuition. Now, let's talk about the intuition part of it. Intuition is related to skill. So the greater your skill, the greater your intuition is gonna be. So if you haven't played enough basketball, right? Like when someone passes, let's say you're playing basketball and you pass the ball, through, through having played so many games, you intuitively, and by intuitively we just mean very quickly and automatically, you know that, or like if you're a chess player, you've seen so many games, this situation jumps out at you. You just feel like, I can see there's a combination to be had over here. So that intuition will arise from just having put in your, kind of paying your dues, doing lots of problems, doing lots of diverse problems, learning many techniques, and then taking a little time to play with them, to integrate, and just to explore. You might, for example, you might be great playing two-on-two -two basketball and full court, but you might not be good on those transitions where it goes from five-on-five -five to two-on-two. -two. So then you might need to work the transitions. And by the way, so the, the reason I'm talking so much about basketball is all of these things are related. There's a guy you may want to check out, um, Ido Portal. He's big on movement. And he has like a similar methodology of like learning things, integrating, improvising. Everything is related, whether you're doing math, whether you're doing physical fitness, whether you're doing physics, whether you're doing rock climbing, whether you're doing music. Uh, playing back, it, it doesn't really matter. The principles are the same. So hopefully that's helpful on how to build intuition. I, ex I suspect a lot of you folks, um, I, I don't know, but this shouldn't come as a shock. It's more about figure out which of these three steps you're not doing enough of. For many people, it's number three. And for many like people, it's just number two. You just don't know enough math. You just don't, you haven't studied enough techniques where you could see one thing from many perspectives. By the way, I'm speaking about this kind of broadly without some nice math examples. So make sure to see the links in the description. There'll be some nice stuff like, for example, about pi, how to think about pi from many perspectives. That'll give you guys a, a nice example. All right, so second half of the video. Specific geometry skills and questions that I feel are really underutilized. This, this is gonna serve both to kind of answer the, the question of the topic of the video, but also this is a roadmap for the next few videos. So for those of you following the Art of Math playlist, the thing, the three things I have in these square boxes, those are gonna be, these videos are gonna be coming pretty soon, so you can expect something on those. All right, so what are these, some of these useful skills? 
I want to emphasize these are not all the skills. These are just some good ones to get you guys started. Visualization skills. So specifically for geometry, many students, many adults have trouble visualizing things, whether they're on paper or in their heads. But I want to emphasize that if you have trouble drawing something, that will increase the odds that you have trouble visualizing it in your head. So you might want to take, uh, you don't have to take a drawing class and become an artist, but doing little exercises such as these. So for example, can you draw a cube, a realistic looking cube? So I've, here I have drawn a little cube. The, the parts we can't see I've drawn in small dotted lines. You can make them solid or dotted, but the, the point is, if you can't draw a compelling looking 3D cube, chances are you're thinking about cubes in your mind is also kind of fuzzy. So here actually art can help us. And in fact, uh, Professor uh, to Todashi uh, Tokida, if I'm not mispronouncing his name, he used to be an artist. So that, that's kind of an interesting, and he does topology, which is a very, requires a lot of visualization and geometry. So draw, you might want to draw a cube. For example, draw a cube with a corner sliced off. See what that looks like. Draw a cone and then try to slice off a piece of the cone. Maybe not just this way, but at different angles, perpendicular, parallel, all sorts of slants, and see what you get. Do you get a circle? Do you get an ellipse? Well, what shapes do you get? So exercises such as those, drawing pyramids, you'll be surprised how much that can help your thinking. All right. Now, conceptual questions. A lot of times people just do, especially in school, I know a lot of you guys are subjected to this, you just do the number crunching quantitative stuff. But there's, I feel like there's not enough questions on the conceptual stuff, and these can actually be more fun. So that's part, like one of the things that gets me to like math. So rather than just doing solving equations, for example, you could ask questions about how many intersection points can we have if we have, let's say, four lines on a page. So like one, two, three, like, or, or circles or parabolas or other shapes. So that's a nice series of questions and other such questions. So we're going to go over that question in particular in the future video, but that's the kind of question where we're not really solving equations, but you're get, it's really helping you to visualize again and get a feel for this geometry. Other questions. So for example, this is not geometry, but just to give you guys another math example, systems of equations. There's at least two things you could do with them. There is, you could solve your equations, and if you go to video number 53 in the Art of Math playlist, you'll see we discuss conceptually what these equations mean. So for example, a linear equation like, let's say, x plus y equals 5, you could think of that as a line. And let's say 3x plus 2y is 7, that's some other line. So if we have two lines, we could talk about their intersections, and that's solving the equations. And that gets to integrating them because now we're connecting our geometric knowledge to our algebraic knowledge. So we're attacking the problem from many perspectives and angles. So that's another example of how we can work on conceptual questions and not just technical quantitative ones. And, and many other such things. These are just some, some things to kind of give you guys some ideas. All right, next, C. This one can be particularly fun and I feel this is not done enough of, especially at, a, at an early age. At an early age, there's often this assumption of like, there's just math you have to know before you can have any fun with math. Not true. So play around. So th there are certain assumptions we make in most of our mathematics that we do in school. Axioms, things that we just take, assume to be true, right? So examine your assumptions and be a little uh, mischief, you know, mischievous about it. Like, what happens if I break that assumption? Does math go horribly wrong or do interesting things happen? So for example, many of you probably know if I have two points that uniquely determines a line. So you might ask yourself, is that always the case? Can I create some diabolical situation, some weird situation where that's not the case? And we're going to do a video on that. Do triangles, are the angles in a triangle always going to sum to 180 degrees? Is that sometimes not going to be the case? Can you, can you come up with an instance where that won't be the case? You might have to come up with a wacky situation 
but let's see. So play around. You, it might be other things, not even geometry. Let's say a square root. You, you might be wondering, like you might wonder, what happens if I throw in a negative number into square root? What happens if my exponent is just questions? Basically, this has to do with asking good questions as well. So just play around with it. Don't worry if you if you break mathematics. A lot of new mathematics is created by breaking old mathematics. D. Now, I'm not going to go too into detail about the wiggle method. The wiggle method is one of my favorite things. It's something I created for myself uh, during my school years, and I found this to be incredibly useful. In a nutshell, it's going to involve combining visualization with the extremal principle, taking things to extremes and seeing what happens i.e. wiggling things around. So I'm not going to go into detail as to what it is, so you're, I'm just going to leave you guys in suspense, but stay tuned in, in, in several videos. I'll definitely do a video on the wiggle method. It's one of my favorite things, and I it feel it helps, it really helps build your intuition. So that's a little bit of an overview and game plan, so stay tuned for that, and you know, see, see which one of these steps you might not be doing, and maybe practice some visualization. Also, a, a little a little kind of exercise that might be a great develop, developmental exercise. I talked about basketball and some other examples like music with mathematics. See if you can come up with other areas that I didn't cover in your life or things you're just aware of where to get good at something and to build your intuition for something is kind of the same process. Or maybe think, like, think about how it's not the same process. Did I skip a step? Would you refine this process? I think it's really helpful to connect these interdiscipl you know, interdisciplinary subjects to develop your intuition because the cool thing is as you get really great at one thing, it will help you get better at other things. And by the way, Da Vinci was really big on this of talking about how things are interconnected, Leonardo Da Vinci. All right, so I will see you guys in the next few videos.